Uh, <laughs> let's have some more ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> Do you need more mix? Yeah. I need five quarts. When we get down to the last flavor, we're going to say, hey, you want to make some more? <laughs> no, no, no more. No, they'll be doing this. No, no. Another bag. Uh-oh. That's nothing. It's a broker. Yeah, he says sell, sell. <laughs> uh, George. So um, I was telling Brian, I think, that it took me six years to come up with vanilla ice cream. I make 40 flavors in my store. We sell 40 flavors. And I've been open for eight years. And we vary the flavors, seasonal and, and specials and all that. But, but I was never able to come up with a great vanilla ice cream. And vanilla is the test of ice cream. If you can't make vanilla, you can't. The other stuff's easy. You can add tons of cherries and make cherry ice cream and tons of chocolate and make chocolate ice cream. But vanilla is bare. There's no, you're not putting anything in there. So to make a great vanilla ice cream, I was stymied. Me, the great Jeff, was stymied. The Thanks great Jeff. <laughs> Somebody, nobody laughed. They, uh, well, I did. <laughs> so then uh, a friend of ours, uh, Rod Oranger, came up. He owns I Rice and Company. And he exactly on it. Well, he's he important. He's an important person. Okay, he came up. I guess he came up with it, or the I don't know. probably him. Yeah, he came up with a product, and uh, other places make it, but he really makes it. And uh, he sent me a, a free one, which I love. <laughs> and uh, and I tried it, and we're going to have it today, and uh, uh, it's it's an amazing. Addition and it makes a great vanilla ice cream. Plus, I use his expensive free vanilla, so you can't miss. <laughs> and there's really only uh, there's only mixed vanilla and this stuff. What this is, I guess he would want me to show it, right? Sure. This is called Bavarian base. Bavarian base, and the reason this makes it so good is that the uh, the ingredients, the first ingredient are pasteurized egg yolks. So that's what makes this ice cream so good. Uh, plus the mix that comes from, we get our mix in, in Florida from two places. Uh, the one Steve uses and I use in my store is over in St. Petersburg. It's called Dairy Mix. And they make a heck of a mix. So we'll try this. It's so simple. It's almost, uh, it's almost embarrassing. Not quite, but almost embarrassing. Uh, in this machine, this is a 12-quart machine, so we'll use five quarts of mix. In the store, I have a 24-quart machine, same footprint as this, just the barrel's larger, and I use 10 quarts. I do that so that this is a batch. I don't have to measure anything. And that's, that's a benefit. I didn't always have a 24, I had a six, where you have to measure the amount. Uh, but in mine, I just take a bag and throw it in. What could be simpler? But here we're gonna have to measure half of this. So that's five quarts, and that's it. Put some vanilla in now. Try not to rinse when he pours that vanilla in. Steve. I don't even look anymore. <laughs> I mean, what, what, what can I say? 
I, I, I don't pay for it. <laughs> so. About five ounces. I usually add uh, an ounce per quart. <laughs> <laughs> And then we'll add this stuff. How much was in that can? How much was what? Never mind. Okay. Somebody at the break asked about buying the ice cream rather than making the ice cream, uh, you still make a ton of money, uh, but look at the fun we're having. <laughs> um, okay, we're, we're, ready. we're ready. Is anybody else too cold besides Giselle? You're freezing. I'll warm it up a little bit. Well, not too much. Not too much. Giselle, I can call in so Sammy. She can sit on your lap. That's it. Pretty simple. As we talked about yesterday, when you first start in your business, ice cream, ices, cream ice, whatever you're doing, you'll, you'll come up with flavors that have a lot of ingredients because it's fun. You know, you'll make a chocolate cake and you'll say, well, let's put the chocolate cake in and then we'll put some chips. How about some caramel too? And then we might add a little sugar because it wasn't really sweet enough. And then maybe we should put some cherries, make it like German chocolate. And then, a year from then, your husband will say, hey, let's make that German chocolate ice cream. And you'll say, now let's just make chocolate. <laughs> because it's, uh, what, how did we discuss, discuss that? Um, it's too much work, right? <laughs> it's too much work. It's fun in the beginning, and after 30,000 gallons, cherries and sugar and caramel and cake and, geez. So, but I still come up with flavors every week, different flavors, because that's the fun, and that's the art of it. Right? <laughs> you don't know what I said. All right. Uh, any questions? Or? No, but I just want to show something mechanical, if I, if I can. Ooh, go for it. Um, can I use you for a second? Yeah. Um, if you've got... Careful, he's a scientist. A scientist, okay. Um, when you make ice cream, or when you use a machine, uh, any kind of machine, you have to cool the engine, what we call the compressor. And you either cool it by passing air over it, like this one, or by circulating water around it, like this one. Uh, this one is going to generate heat, but not a whole lot because it's a countertop. Um, and uh, this one can be built either uh, water-cooled, circulating water, or uh, air-cooled. Uh, one advantage of the water-cooled, besides not putting any heat in the room, is it's really self-diagnosing. The water comes in at tap water temperature and then circulates around the compressor and goes back out again at about 108 degrees. Now, 108 degrees is warm, but it's not really warm enough to want to take a shower in. Uh, so that's an easy way to judge it. So if you call up, and you've had a machine for 20 years, and all of a sudden today, uh, the compressor's shutting off, we're gonna ask you to do this simple test, which I'm gonna have you do. If you'll go over to the sink where Jeff is, you'll see the water coming out on the right-hand side, and just feel that. It's warm, right? Okay, that means that everything on the machine is running perfectly. If that was hot, uh, I would suspect that the water was, the valve on the wall, not the machine, was partially turned down, uh, or what happens, thank you very much, that's all he needed. Um, if we roll this, he did a great job. If we roll this machine out, uh, and, and this is why we're so accessible at Emory Thompson, because we've heard everything. Um, what does the uh, insurance company farmers say? That uh, we, know a, we, we know a little bit because we've seen a little bit. Uh, we know a lot because uh, someone might call up and they say, oh, the water's not coming out of the machine. Well, we might ask a question, not something mechanical, but we'd just say, did you clean behind the machine last night? Oh yeah, we got this great company, they come in at three in the morning, we're not there. They move everything, they move the tables, they move the freezers, and they clean everything and they put it back. 
Well, let's see if when they rolled this back, maybe they rolled it onto the, the flexible water line and it squeezed off the water supply. So there's no water cooling the machine. So there's nothing wrong with the compressor. There's nothing wrong with the expansion valve. You don't need a repairman to come in, though we have them on call. You just move the machine about one inch, and now you're not on the water line anymore. It, it's that simple. When you build machines for 113 years, well, not me, I'm not 113, but uh, I've been doing it for about 45. But when you build machines that long, you hear the same things over and over again, and it makes this machinery very, very simple to diagnose. I've had people call up and ask me to diagnose their tailors and Capigianis, and I have no trouble doing it because the principle, the actual how to do it, is pretty much the same. So just a little something to know about uh, a very simple piece of machinery. I think they're all falling asleep <laughs> they're now. They're sugared out. They were so excited before. <laughs> <laughs> we wore them out. <laughs> they were so excited before. No, actually, you are a very good crowd. We've been up here sometimes, and Jeff comes over and whispers to me. He goes, you think they're all dead? <laughs> no, you guys are a good group. No, the, uh, the advantage of air or water, it's a really good question. Okay, so we're here in Florida, if you're watching, and uh, so we live and die on air conditioning. We need air conditioning. This machine is not generating a lot of heat at a two horsepower compressor. This at three horsepower is almost quadruple the amount of heat that it's putting out if it was air cooled. So this room right now is set at 73 degrees. If it's an air cooled machine, I'm not using any water, so I'm saving on my water bill, but my room just went up 10 degrees in the last hour. And so now the air conditioning had to kick in. Air conditioning is fossil fuel. Fossil fuel is uh, oil, and, uh, and the price of uh, oil and electricity go up about four times a year. Your water bill is expensive. Whether you're in Alaska, New York, uh, Maui, it doesn't matter. We know your water bill is expensive and your sewer is expensive too. But it goes up pennies a year compared to your electricity which every time you get a new electric bill, they've announced a new uh, increase in the bill. When you've got a machine that lasts for 40 years, uh, a water-cooled machine is gonna be far less expensive to run than an air-cooled. So I'd say on these bigger models, we're about 90% water-cooled, 10% air. And the 10% are air are because they're in Los Angeles and there's water restrictions. You're on the island of Jamaica where there is no water and they count on rainwater uh, to drink. Uh, or uh, you're um, in Saudi Arabia and it's not practical to even find water. So unless there are restrictions or the impossibility of fine water, a water cooled is, is an easier way to go. They both make ice cream in the same amount of time. The uh, air cooled machine has a third more moving parts, so it costs $1,000 more to buy. So when someone says to me, oh, I want to buy an air cooled because I had to pay the plumber to come in and run the water line, the garden hose. It's a garden hose connection. I say, yeah, but you got $1,000 to play with. I mean, you ought to be able to find a plumber who can run you a simple line over to the sink for 1000 bucks. So if you're buying smaller machines, air cooled. If you're buying larger, usually water cooled. You've never looked at your water bill. Who cares? It's a cost of doing business. Right. Yeah, exactly. Doesn't matter. Any questions? We can answer questions about any aspect of the business. Or we can make them up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. What do you say? <laughs> can you put that in English? He's asking about overrun. Oh, okay. I heard something about batch consolidation. What reduces your overrun? Okay, I can answer that easily. What That's, was the question? What is overrun? No, I don't think he's asking that. Well, it's, it's basically the same thing. Okay. First off, the definition of overrun the word overrun. Let's get rid of the word overrun and use proof, as in alcohol, as in rum. If you have a 100 proof bottle of rum, it's 50% alcohol and 50% other stuff. 
and they call that 100 proof. But if you analyze it, it's only 50% alcohol. So if we have a 100 proof vanilla ice cream, it's 50% dairy and 50% air. My father was called down in the late 1950s to a Senate subcommittee hearing because Senator Foghorn Langhorn said, uh, sir, I, I, sir, I understand that uh, you're cheating the public. You're putting air into the ice cream. And my father said, well, yeah, if you didn't have air, it would taste like lead. So air is a normal component of ice cream. Uh, people say, well, I want, it. I want ice cream with no air in it. Well, if you take the ice cream mix or just water and put it into ice cube trays, you're so young, you probably don't know what an ice cube tray is. Uh, if you put the water into an ice cube tray and freeze it, you know the, the uh, ice cubes crown over? The normal wow. expansion of water is 17%. 17% in proof would be 34% uh, percent proof or 34% overrun. So um, homemade ice cream is normally 100 proof or 100 proof overrun uh, or 100% overrun. It is half dairy and half air. I think the best way to look at it, because people will again say, oh, I don't want any air in my ice cream. Well, fine. What are we trying to make? Let's put it on the birthday cakes. Uh, you know what a birthday cake tastes like. A birthday cake would be 100% overrun, lots of air. A pound cake would be a low overrun, 40% air. And they're both good, they're both cakes, but which would you rather eat a second piece of? Uh, a birthday cake or Aunt Martha's pound cake, which is going to sit like lead in your stomach. And then you can take it one further to a dense brownie. Okay. Which is really heavy. Sure. And they're delicious, but you can only eat a small amount. Right. So when we go to serve um, ice cream, 100, 100% overrun, 100 proof, 4 ounces is going to fill this bowl and look really nice. Uh, a 40% overrun haagen they're actually 45, is going to look very small. It's going to be very dense, kind of like nuclear waste. It's really uh, tight. <laughs> How can you uh, compare haagen -Dazs to nuclear waste? <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a very small, heavy amount of ice cream. That's why there's no haagen -Dazs stores anymore. There might be one or two. They're dead. They just don't know it. Um, it doesn't sell well because four ounces of haagen -Dazs, which is a great ice cream. I love it. We put them in business falls into the lower third of the, the uh, cone. It's so dense. And people eat with their eyes. They want the ice cream falling off. Well, you'd have to give them 10 or 12 ounces of haagen -Dazs to be falling off the cone. And it would, when they did have stores open, they were serving these small portions, and you would see half-eaten cones in the trash outside the store. It was good ice cream, but it was so heavy, you couldn't finish it, so you threw it out. And it had the heat outside, to the 16% butter fat, can't eat it at all. Yeah, just too much. Too much. So uh, air is an important component, but if you want to make it simple, and so what my machine does, my infinite overrun control, that was my whole invention, is we're all at 100% overrun, gelato was all at 50, 55% overrun, and that's all you could make. Um, with the invention of the infinite overrun, I can start at 100% and I can go down to about 35%, uh, which is just around what freezing ice cubes would be. Uh, so virtually no uh, air caused by the agitation. So we can give you anything you want. But the fact of the matter is, if you go up to Jeff's place and you eat ice cream, nobody has ever walked out of his store and said, that's the best darn air content I ever ate. Or, man, I love his uh, butterfat content. Nobody says that. They say, wow, his mint chip is really minty. We eat taste. We eat the whole package. Uh, more minty than yours. More minty than mine. <laughs> and we eat the finished product and say that's great. We don't break it down into air content. You tell me what you want, I'll tell you how to make it. If you tell me you want the densest mint chip on earth, the machine will do it. But will it sell? No, it won't. Uh, if you want to sell it to a restaurant, now this is 100% overrun, and I think you'll find this very delicious. And even this product will change after we freeze it. It'll have, I contend, it'll have more flavor. It might be just, just says no, it might be just because it's going to be served colder. Uh, right now, I would consider it warm compared to what we're going to serve it to you after it's been frozen for six hours. Yeah. 
fat content. The federal government says in order for this product to be ice cream, it's got to be a minimum of 10%. Below 10%, when I was growing up, it was legally called ice milk. Today, ice milk isn't a term. It's called gelato or yogurt or anything else you want to call it because there's no federal terms for those. Come on up and try this, and then I'll just finish off after that. That looks good. What this is, is French vanilla. Okay. Why don't we name it Steve's Vanilla? Okay. <laughs> um, in France, by the way, by law, the law states that ice cream, if it's called ice cream, must contain eggs. Eggs. Wow, I didn't know by that. Law? By law. I didn't know that. If you call it ice cream in France, it has to contain eggs. Yeah, but I don't have it here. Uh -huh. I didn't. Absolutely, absolutely. And I knew it had to be your dashers. I love those dashers. Yeah, it's a, it's a design we've had for a long time. Over the years. Well, it just. I just wore it's, out my last. Right, right. right. My, my most recent White Mountain gave up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where I came from. White Mountain. That was your best. Uh -huh. I'd, love to, I'd love to have one of yours, one of these old deals. Well, they make them still. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so are these but it, it makes a, it makes still a, make these? We don't, but the, the company does, White Mountain. They're owned by uh, oh, Rival. Right. They stink. They, yeah. I'm they, not happy with them. No, they're very inexpensive. But the problem is with the old salt and ice machine is it takes 40 minutes, and that makes a very granular ice cream. Mm -hmm. By freezing in eight minutes, we're a much smoother product. Mm. We have experimented with making ice cream even as fast as four minutes, and it had a, a negative effect. It, it just didn't bring out the flavor. It froze mm. too quickly. 